Hi folks, my name is Jeff Pruder and welcome to AP Language and Composition. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I, I know that the start of the year has already been a little chaotic, so we really appreciate your time and energy uh, into supporting your students in their pursuit of becoming better readers, writers, and thinkers. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. This course already feels a little bit like heading into uncharted territory. It feels different than many courses uh, that we have at South Lyon High School. It is heavier into nonfiction. It focuses far more on the, the composition, of course, built right into the name. Um, and so it becomes a more writing intensive course than perhaps students have seen in the past. Plus, it's a shift into upperclassmen territory. Many of your students are now juniors. And so all of a sudden, college is feeling a little bit closer. And certainly for our, our juniors, um, you know, we also have all of the, the testing that they need to navigate. For our seniors, college is even a little bit closer. And so that idea of life post high school is, is right there for us. So the combination between a shift in the type of course and just that time of year already feels like uncharted territory. And now we throw in the virtual learning that we have started with and the unknowns about where we will be in a few weeks, whether that will stay consistent and where we go from there. And yet, despite all of that, I'm really excited to talk to you a little bit about this course, why I enjoy teaching it, why I love teaching it is what I truly should say, and why I'm really excited about the work that we have already done. So we'll talk a little bit about the goals that we have, and we'll talk about some of the ways in which we plan to get there. Before we dive into those goals, though, I want to hover just for a second on the name of the course, Language and Composition. Oftentimes, it just gets truncated down to, oh, I'm taking AP Lang or I'm taking Lang and Comp. But if we slow down, I want us to pay attention to, to the pursuit of both of those. We are going to pour over words. We are going to write alongside and from those words. We are going to be composing a variety of different writings in different forms. We are going to work toward becoming uh, all around better readers and writers. In truth, though, um, all of the things that we are going to, to do, and I could list all of them, but I think it would take too long in a video like this, all of the things that we do are secondary to our, our true purpose, which is the pursuit of growth, the, the pursuit of being able to think critically and uh, divergently on different pathways about some issues that we're going to be grappling with this year. And truly our big goal is to finish the year differently than how we began. That is the true goal of education. It's the true goal of this class. Let's talk broadly about some of our, our big goals. If I had to boil it down, our goals for your students uh, are to become better readers, better writers, better thinkers, and to become more engaged and informed citizens. We'll talk about how those first three really lead into the fourth, as well as some specific things we're gonna try and do to emphasize uh, that fourth category a little bit. Before we break those down though, you'll notice the AP exam is not listed in those big four goals. I wanna be really clear. The AP Lang exam matters. I expect all of our students to take it, and I know that many of your students uh, will find success in the AP exam, just as we've seen over the past few years. Our students have been very, very successful on the exams, and we're very proud of that. At the same time, there is another truth that we need to consider, and this is not specific to AP Lang, nor is it specific to South Lyon. It is a nationwide issue, and that is we know that there are some AP students who pass out of entry level courses, take that 200 level course and struggle a little bit. And in its simplest form, form, the main reason for that is they were prepped for the exam, but they were not necessarily prepped for the rigor of that course day in, day out over the course of the semester. If all we do is prep for one test on one day, we're doing a disservice to our students. So the design of the course is truly revolving around those essential skills that we need to be successful at the next level. And if we do a good enough job in these categories, then the, the grades will come and certainly the scores on the AP exam will come as well. So please don't look at that and say the AP exam is uh, far down on the priority list. That's simply not true. In fact, we're going to be talking in class quite a bit and maybe about two, three weeks from now, uh, doing a deep dive into everything that's a part of the exam. What's in the multiple choice and how we prep for it? What are the three big essays? How do we prep for those? Timed writing, all of those things. But if we make those the foremost approach, then we're going to find um, too many bumps in the, in the road when things get a little bit more real and we don't want to do that disservice. So how are we going to work on becoming better readers, better writers, better critical thinkers? 
one of the big shifts that you're going to, to see in this course is the importance of conferencing. In fact, I have already had a 15 minute conference with every single one of your students. Um, Many of those took place in class. Some of them happened after school. And some of you might have wondered why in the world was your, su your student going back up uh, into his or her bedroom and doing a 15 minute conference at seven o'clock at night. Sorry, with my tennis schedule, we had to do some evening conferences. But it's important because we're starting to build those skills of the importance of sitting down and working through things together. Now that feels really different right? Oftentimes we think about feedback as something that comes at the end of a process. Students have written a paper, they get feedback, and they have a chance to go ahead and create revisions. But oftentimes by the time we get to the end, those revisions are going to be subtle. Um, and in truth, we're not going to grow as writers in the ways that we truly want to. Really, we don't need feedback. We need feed forward. And that's not just in the middle of an essay or or even towards the end, we need to be involved early. Uh, that's in the brainstorming phase. That's in the, the idea generating phase, the drafting stage. That's in the goal setting stage where we start to talk about what are some things you want to do in this writing that you haven't tried yet? And how can I help you build up the confidence to actually try that? A lot of that will be through some low stakes writing before they're expected to do that in full length essays. But at the end of the day, all of that is so incredibly important. And it's something that we often don't find the time to do, but I believe we need to. We need to talk a lot. And that's not something we often connect to good writing is, is talking, but we need it. All of the talking and collaborating is challenging, but it's also so incredibly important for supporting good writing. It doesn't necessarily come through on the AP exam, but it will come through uh, far beyond that and all the other disciplines that we need to be thinking about. It takes time. It takes different, unpredictable conversations, um, you know, with the writer as they work through their process. But talking helps and, and supportive, constructive talking helps writers even more, especially new writers who we're going to ask to push in different directions than perhaps they've they've gone. So we're going to be doing uh, some serious talking this year about their writing. We'll do that with their reading as well. We're going to be reading um, instead of uh, whole class novels, we do far more with reading collections of essays and trying to synthesize those together. But we still want students to be reading full length books. We'll be doing that through some independent reading opportunities, which in truth kind of goes by the wayside in high school. I truly think we need to bring it back. It's something I did more of last year and I'm so happy that we did. Students read such a variety of interesting nonfiction texts that in truth, they probably wouldn't have the, the interest or the courage to pick up because nonfiction is not something they're used to being exposed to. We have a classroom library of nearly 200 award-winning nonfiction books that your students are going to have a chance to engage in. And certainly they can read some fiction too, if that's what's interesting to them because Fiction writers are beautiful writers, but I'm also excited to introduce them to nonfiction as a genre that perhaps they, they haven't necessarily dealt with. All of this, of course, will help us become better critical thinkers as we expand our ideas, as we do a lot of talking about what we're reading, what we're writing, what we're struggling with, and how we can work our way through that. All of which we hope leads to more engaged, informed citizens. The summer work your students engaged in was to read, watch, listen to interesting things that were happening in the news and to write alongside and from those. I had so many students say that at first they did it a little begrudgingly, but then by the end they found that they actually kind of liked it and they found it as an interesting way to start to engage with the world. So many students said, this isn't really stuff I normally pay attention to, but, and then they were kind of happy with, with where they were able to start to go. And even for some students who were still feeling hesitant, I think it was a great entry point to start to see all the different ways that they can engage um, in some serious topics that, that maybe they haven't had a chance to explore, as well as some topics that maybe they have been interested in, but didn't quite fit cleanly into any unit that they'd come across in an English or a, a history or a science class uh, or a math class or whatever it, it may be. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to have that opportunity. Now, really quickly, um, I know the video's already been a bit long, so if you've hung on this long, uh, that tells me something important, which means you want to know how you can help your student be successful this year. If you're asking that in terms of whole idea of navigating six courses, please shoot me an email. I'd love to share some ideas with you on what has worked for me personally, what I saw work for students in the spring as we moved online. Those, st those students still did incredibly well on the AP exam overall. I'd love to float some ideas there. And of course, things that have helped students thus far. 
But let's start by talking, um, in this video anyway, uh, specifically about AP Lang. Um, I tried to boil it down here to, to kind of these big five. Um, one, share what you have been reading. And if you're not a, a big reader right now because life is busy and chaotic enough, trying to model that of even 10 minutes of reading, I think makes a really big difference. Talk a little bit about what you're reading and what you're finding to be interesting or, or challenging. Invite them into that conversation that talking about what they're reading is important and make it a little bit more normal. I think that would be awesome. Building off that is, is kind of just discussing that. You do not have to have read, um, excuse me, you do not have to have read the, the, the book that your student's working through or the article that we worked through as a, an entire class. What you need to do is ask about, you know, what was at the core of the article and what did they think? What, what questions remained? What made sense? What was confusing? What did they like about the writing? And then my favorite question, why? Again, just that engagement. And you're going to be able to know based on how comfortable they are talking about what's been going on in class recently. You're going to be able to engage whether or not they're in a good spot or whether you want to say, you know what, it sounds like you should reach out to Mr. Pruder and, and maybe make sure we get back on the same track. If they struggle to kind of openly discuss those things, that might be a little bit of a, a key. Again, I think that kind of plays with the the read that's at the very bottom. I'm going to move myself out of the way here. Um, you know, don't worry if you're if you're not an expert on something that we're reading about. Um, you know, having that conversation is so important. The first step to interpretation is just being able to summarize. And so if you can help your student with those crucial first steps, um, that's going to propel him or her forward. So how about the writing? Because we know that the writing is a huge focus in here. One, if uh, you are lucky enough to talk your student into allowing you to do a little bit of, of editing, um, take a look and try and summarize what his or her main points are. Chances are by you saying, this seems like kind of your core ideas. They're going to know right away whether they say, yeah, that's everything I was hoping my reader would get out of it. Or they'll say, yeah, but did you see this? And if there are those gaps, then that's a great chance that they might uh, be able to go back and find some gaps in their writing. Gaps in your understanding aren't a weakness for you. That's a responsibility for the writer to go back to. So if you can respond and, and just summarize some points in their writing, I think that's a great little check-in. Here's the other one, to listen. Um, ask to hear your students writing. Have them read it out loud to you, or you could even uh, read it out loud to them. Hearing our writing out loud is very, very vulnerable. It's also incredibly powerful because hearing it out loud allows us to hear those inconsistencies and students will be able to make their own revisions. Again, you do not need to be a writing expert. If you are, if writing is a big part of what you do, then you can, of course, add in extra steps to this. But you don't need to be. Your student needs an audience. Your student needs someone to kind of share ideas with. They will naturally end up doing the work. And that truly is our, our ultimate goal here. So those are kind of my, uh, my big five uh, for you. All right. So at the end of the day, folks, I'm excited to be on this journey with, with your students. It's uncharted territory, but we're ready to navigate these waters as long as we have the tools to do so. And that's what we're going to be working on. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything that you would like to discuss about this video or anything that you just feel like didn't get covered, please don't hesitate to reach out. And let's please have an open dialogue throughout the semester and throughout the year. It is going to be a year in which I'm going to need your support and I'm going to need your teamwork um, because it's just going to be different. And so the more of that we can do together, the more successful find for your students. Thank you so much for your time and energy. We very much appreciate it and I look forward to a great year. Thank you.